The gaur which is also called the Indian bison, is the largest extant bovine and the tallest wild cattle species. Scientific name is Boscaurus. This species is native to the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia. It has been listed as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List since 1986. Population decline in parts of its range is likely to be more than 70% during the last three generations. However, population trends are stable in well-protected areas, and are rebuilding in a few areas which previously had been neglected. Before starting make sure that you have subscribed this channel. And also turn on the notification button so you will be notified about my channel. Let's start. Scientific classification Kingdom Animalia Phylum Chordata Class Mammalia Order Artiodactyla Family Bovidae Subfamily Bovini Genus Boss Species Boscaurus The gaur is a strong and massively built species with a high convex ridge on the forehead between the horns, which protrudes anteriorly, causing a deep hollow in the profile of the upper part of the head. There is a prominent ridge on the back. The ears are very large, the tail only just reaches the hocks, and in old bulls the hair becomes very thin on the back. In color, the adult male gaur is dark brown, approaching black in very old individuals, the upper part of the head, from above the eyes to the nape of the neck, is, however, ashy gray, or occasionally dirty white, the muzzle is pale colored, and the lower part of the legs are pure white or tan. The cows and young bulls are paler, and in some instances have a rufous tinge, which is most marked in groups inhabiting dry and open districts. The tail is shorter than in the typical oxen, reaching only to the hocks. They have a distinct ridge running from the shoulders to the middle of the back, the shoulders may be as much as 12 cm or 4.7 inches higher than the rump. This ridge is caused by the great length of the spinous processes of the vertebrae of the forepart of the trunk as compared with those of the loins. The hair is short, fine, and glossy, the hoofs are narrow and pointed. The gaur has a head and body length of 250 to 330 cm or 8 feet 2 inches to 10 feet 10 inches with a 70 to 105 cm or 28 to 41 inches long tail, and is 142 to 220 cm or 4 feet 8 inches to 7 feet 3 inches high at the shoulder averaging about 168 cm or 5 feet 6 inches in females and 188 cm or 6 feet 2 inches in males. At the top of its muscular hump just behind its shoulder, an average adult male is just under 200 cm or 6 feet 7 inches tall and the male's girth at its midsection, behind its shoulders, averages about 277 cm or 9 feet 1 inches. Males are about one-fourth larger and heavier than females. 
Body mass can range widely from 440 to 1000 kg or 970 to 2200 pound in adult females and 588 to 1500 kg or 1296 to 3307 pound in adult males. In general measurements are derived from Gowers surveyed in India. Indian Gaur males averaged about 840 kg or 1,850 pound approximately and females weigh a median of approximately 700 kg or 1,500 pound. Body masses elsewhere suggest Gaurs outside of India can grow larger. For example, males from China, Bos Gaurus laosiensis, can weigh 1,200 kg or 2,600 pound or more. The Celadang, or Malaysian subspecies, Boscaurus hubaki, appears to be larger on average than the nominate race from India, but sample sizes as known are small. According to some sources, Celadang bulls weigh on average 1,000 to 1,300 kg or 2,200 to 2,900 pound, which if accurate indicates these animals are on average more than 20% more massive than the gaurs of India. Gaurs do not have a distinct dewlap on the throat and chest. Both sexes carry horns, which grow from the sides of the head, curving upwards. Between the horns is a high convex ridge on the forehead. At their bases they present an elliptical cross section, a characteristic that is more strongly marked in bulls than in cows. The horns are decidedly flattened at the base and regularly curved throughout their length, and are bent inward and slightly backward at their tips. The color of the horns is some shade of pale green or yellow throughout the greater part of their length but the tips are black. The horns, of medium size by large bovid standards, grow to a length of 60 to 115 cm or 24 to 45 inches. The cow is considerably lighter in make and in color than the bull. The horns are more slender and upright, with more inward curvature, and the frontal ridge is scarcely perceptible. In young animals the horns are smooth and polished. In old bulls they are rugged and dented at the base. Gowers are among the largest living land animals. Only elephants, rhinos, the hippopotamus, hippopotamus amphibious, and the giraffe, giraffa camelopardalis, consistently grow heavier. Two species that naturally coexist with the gaur are heavier, the Asian elephant, Elephas maximus, and Indian rhinoceros, Rhinoceros unicornis. By most standards of measurements, gaur is the largest wild bovid alive today. However, the shorter-legged, bulkier wild water buffalo, Buabalus arni, is similar in average body mass, if not maximum weight. Gaur historically occurred throughout mainland South and Southeast Asia, including Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Peninsular, Malaysia, Myanmar, India, Bangladesh, Bhutan, China and Nepal. Today, the range of the species is seriously fragmented, and it is regionally extinct in Sri Lanka. Where gaur have not been disturbed, they are basically diurnal. In other areas, they have become largely nocturnal due to forest molestation caused by humans. In central India, they are most active at night, and are rarely seen in the open after 8 o'clock in the morning. 
During the dry season, herds congregate and remain in small areas, dispersing into the hills with the arrival of the monsoon. While gaur depend on water for drinking, they do not seem to bathe or wallow. Gaur herds are led by an old adult female, the matriarch. Adult males may be solitary. During the peak of the breeding season, unattached males wander widely in search of receptive females. No serious fighting between males has been recorded, with size being the major factor in determining dominance. Males make a mating call of clear, resonant tones which may carry for more than 1.6 km or 0.99 mile. Gower have also been known to make a whistling snort as an alarm call, and a low, cow-like move. Wild gower graze and browse on a wider variety of plants than any other ungulate species of India, with a preference for the upper portions of plants, such as leaf blades, stems, seeds and flowers of grass species, including cuttum. Gower have one calf or occasionally two after a gestation period of about 275 days, about nine months, a few days less than domestic cattle. Calves are typically weaned after 7 to 12 months. Sexual maturity occurs in the Gower's second or third year. Breeding takes place year-round, but typically peaks between December and June. The lifespan of a gaur in captivity is up to 30 years. Due to their formidable size and power, gaur have few natural predators besides humans. Leopards, Dole packs and large mugger crocodiles occasionally attack unguarded calves or unhealthy animals, however, only the tiger and the saltwater crocodiles have been reported to kill a full-grown adult. But the habitat of gaurs and saltwater crocodiles seldom overlaps in recent times due to the decreasing range of both species, and a crocodile needs to be a mature adult male more than 3.7 meter and 300 kilogram to make a successful attack on healthy bulls tiger is the toe predator of gaur tigers hunt young or infirm gaur but have also been reported to have killed healthy bulls weighing at least 1000 kilogram or 2200 pound when confronted by a tiger the adult members of a gaur herd often form a circle surrounding the vulnerable young and calves, shielding them from the big cat. As tigers rely on ambush attacks when taking on prey as large as a gaur, they will almost always abandon a hunt if detected and met in this manner. They can kill tiger or other predators as protective response. But gaur are not as aggressive toward humans as wild water buffaloes. Boscaurus is listed in Sites Appendix I, and is legally protected in all range states. Cryo conservation of animal genetic resource shave been put into place in order to help reinforce the Gower population. In captivity on January 8, 2001, the first cloned Gower was born at Transova Genetics in Sioux Center, Iowa. The calf was carried and brought successfully to term by a surrogate mother, a domestic cow, Boss Taurus. While healthy at birth, the calf died within 48 hours of a common dysentery, most likely unrelated to cloning. Further measures are recommended to conserve the gaur and its habitat for the benefit of future generations. So we should take proper step to conserve this species. Let us be scientific.
Free.